10 have been taken, as had been almost universally expected, by the new Seattle franchise in the expansion draft last night. And for the Penguins, now, if you will pardon the horrific pun, it's time to get cracking. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and yes, I just said that. <laughs> This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday morning if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer up daily shots of Steelers and Pirates right where you found this. It's funny how knowing something is going to happen, even if it's something bad, two, three days in advance, you kind of brace yourself for it and you don't overreact whenever it does happen. You react pretty much accordingly with what you should. Whereas if it just dropped from the sky, whoa, the Penguins are going to lose Tanev right after they lost Jared McCann. It would feel way more, well, kind of like the McCann thing did. A gut punch. And one thing I've been trying, probably in vain, to recommend here is to back off. And by that, I don't mean back off criticism. I mean back off and see the broader picture. Because that has to be what's going on here. It just has to be. I have not liked either of these moves. I have not liked losing two assets in an expansion draft when you only need to lose one. I have not liked losing Tanev, period. The Penguins now have to go and get a Tanev somewhere. And by that, I don't mean Chris, his brother. I mean, they've got to find a player like that. If it's Yoel Armia, who is a really, really good bottom six forward for the Canadians before that in Winnipeg, and you can get him at a lower price at less of a long-term commitment, okay, great. But you got to go and get a Tanev. You lose McCann, it's not the same. You don't have to go and get a McCann. You hope that some of those guys will kind of materialize from within your own system, maybe even a Samuel Poulin. Accelerating ahead of where, uh, at least where I think he is. I think he could use a year in the AHL. But maybe someone else will think differently. Maybe Sam himself will think differently and he'll show up in camp ready to knock people out. But I don't know that you need to replace a McCann. It's different. Tanev, what he was bringing has to come back in. You know, this this team was not overloaded with super high-energy guys flying and buzzing all over the rink and doing all those Tanev-like things. Oh, and by the way, usually ending up somewhere at or near double-digit goals for the year and being a pretty good penalty killer. Got to find that person now. You got to go out and get them. Sure, maybe you can do it in a more cap-responsible way. Maybe that's the goal. Don't know yet. Unclear so far. But I will say this. If you've gone this far, meaning losing McCann and losing Tanev, and pretty clearly on both counts because of cap space, might as well take that to the next level. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by Fubo TV. The monthly cost of cable bills are 200 bucks. Fubo TV is 65 bucks a month. You get all the same channels, including AT&T Sportsnet Pittsburgh. And for a limited time, go right now to FuboTV.com slash DK to get a free seven-day trial and 15% off your first month when you get started. Again, that's FuboTV.com slash DK. If the cap is the issue, if... Ron Hextall, in consultation with Brian Burke, has made a decision that this team would be a whole lot more efficiently operated if it weren't constantly slamming its forehead into the cap. That, of course, is the way it's been done around here for several years. That's, on one hand, to the credit of the ownership that they do spend up to the cap, 
But at the same time, it's a difficult way to construct and to maintain a roster throughout a season. It's a hard way to address a very specific need when it arises. Again, in the course of a season. And remember that neither Hextall nor Burke is married in any way, shape, or form to contracts that they might or might not deem to have been bad under Jim Rutherford's watch. They don't have to explain Tanev's contract to anybody. Heck, they don't have to go back and explain Jack Johnson's contract either. All they have to do is manage the team right now as they see fit. So, okay, okay, let's say that that's the outlook here because that's starting to be how it appears. And you've already cleared whatever it is from under McCann, you know, $4 million. Uh, you've already cleared now the money that you were going to commit to Tanev, not just now, but for the foreseeable future, another $4 million. Uh, and I'm, I'm rounding up here. I'm not being exact with these figures. Okay, so now you've, you've done that. What are you going to get with it? I, mean, I mentioned you have to replace Tanev. Yol Armia, I don't think, will be inexpensive if you pursue him. But here comes... Here comes. You knew it was coming. Go get a goaltender. Get a really good one. You know? And do it through free agency where you don't have to give up hockey components in the trade. Get yourself a goaltender. Get yourself a goaltender who can either supplant Tristan Jari, meaning like take his place the whole way around and you go with Casey DeSmith as the backup or someone who can really push Jari and then you go with a three goaltender arrangement in which DeSmith ends up kind of being the shuttle back and forth to the minors or he outplays Jari and Jari goes to the minors and makes three million and that's terrible cap management but you get what I'm talking about here they need another goalie you know the other thing I would do with that money Oh, yeah, here comes this one, too. Sign Cody CC yesterday. Move Marcus Pedersen. He's got a $4 million cap hit. Again, this is part of what you're doing here. Clear out cap that you don't want or need. P.O. Joseph, ready, willing, apparently capable, and at less than a quarter of the cost of Pedersen, to come in and make his own imprint on the defensive course. Similar kind of players. Again, you're just managing the cap. But you got to have CeCe. you got to have CeCe. He's the one. I'm not giving up on this one. I fought on McCann. Lost. I fought on Tanev. Lost. I'll fight to the death on the goaltending. But also on CeCe. You cannot let this player walk. It does not make any sense. When we come back, just one question. Welcome back. It's time for Just One Question, and that's always brought to you on this program. Bye. The good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they are re-committed to serving those in need across Western Pennsylvania. And when I say recommitted, I'm referring to the recent rebranding that they did. Go check out pittsburghfoodbank.org to see more of what I'm talking about, particularly if you've been a donor in the past. Find out how they've become more efficient than ever with the money that you generously contribute to the cause. PittsburghFoodBank.org Today's question, naturally, is expansion draft related. It comes from DebateFly, who asks, 
why would the NHL allow leaks of Kraken picks on the Wednesday afternoon before a televised draft? Are they trying to sabotage their unique made-for-TV event? Have they learned nothing from the NFL, which forbids the tipping of picks by reporters? Oh, for anybody who doesn't know what the reference is here, all throughout the day yesterday on social media, it became very clear and very well known which player nearly every team was going to lose because the NHL, for some insane reason, required Seattle management to send a complete copy of their expansion draft picks to what's called Central Registry in Toronto. Well, they got these names, and the names started going out to different places, to players, to agents, uh, to teams, whoever, just to find out which player was going where and so they could begin making appropriate adjustments to their lives. Well, you know, it could have waited. There's no way that stays secret. All these different players, agents, families, everybody finds out. Everybody finds out. By the time poor Ron Francis is standing at that podium, his whole team's already known. Like, Eight hours before the event. For this market, for Seattle, to put up $650 bucks to all build toward this one magical day and to have it blown up by a bunch of tweets in the afternoon is just the most NHL thing ever. But you know what, Seattle? Welcome to the NHL. That's your first real experience with the Garage League because that's how they would conduct business. Now, I want to clarify a couple of things that you said, though, here. You said, have they learned nothing from the NFL, which forbids tipping picks by reporters? The NFL doesn't forbid the tipping of picks. If a reporter finds out, uh, if I were to find out that the Steelers were taking Najee Harris, whether that's two minutes before they announce the pick or two weeks before they announce the pick, I'm not forbidden. There's no such thing from saying who did what. But there's nothing to stop the league or the team from keeping it a secret. Uh, I'm going to repeat here that I don't get the impression at all that this is what anyone in Seattle would have wanted, least of all Ron Francis and the, and the upper management there. They're trying to build up this event into a crescendo after years and a gazillion dollars in the renovation of of the of the key arena into I think what's going to be called Climate Pledge Arena or something like that bought by Amazon and all this stuff goes into it and then it just takes one wag in Toronto to pass the names around to everybody the NHL didn't need those names several hours early all of this could have been conducted in-house by the Seattle Kraken. The whole presentation, the show, the placards, the jerseys, all that stuff, that could have been done in-house, and they could have controlled it. But the moment that you get this league involved in something, something is going to go wrong, and it did. What an embarrassment. Seriously, what an embarrassment for Gary Bettman, as if there can be such a thing. Wow. Anyway... Thanks for the question. Thanks to everybody for listening. We'll have another episode of Daily Shot of Penguins to discuss the aftermath of all this tomorrow. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our DK Pittsburgh Sports channel. And don't forget to hit the bell to get notified every time we post a new video or podcast.